Hello, fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2001 Junior Block of Math Olympiad, problem number one. I suggest you try this nice number theory problem out for a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally 30 minutes to an hour, but not more than two hours. If on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take the next five minutes and put your first ideas out on paper. And now without further ado, let's begin. So here, what we have is that a, B, and C are natural numbers such that A to the power of 3 plus B to the power of 3 plus C cubed is equal to 2001. We must find all triplets A, B, and C such that this holds true. Now, this thing is completely symmetric in A, B, and C. So what we can do to have an extra condition, this is generally useful in like these number theory, algebra, even sometimes combinatorics problems, actually even sometimes geometries, you know, add a condition that helps you out. And you can assume that A is greater than B is greater than or equal to C without any loss of generality. Because, you know, if ABC is a solution, then so is BCA, so is CAB, and so is any combination ACB and any sort of combination you can think of. So we can assume without loss of generality that this is true, that A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C. Now, that being said, we can estimate the size of A, B, and C. So for example, we know that 2001 is going to be, well, this is a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. And now what is this less than or equal to? Well, c is less than or equal to a cubed, b is less than or equal to a cubed, and a is less than or equal to a cubed. So this is less than or equal to 3a cubed. And on the other hand, this is greater than or equal to 3c cubed. In the same sort of way, A is greater than or equal to C, Q, C, B is greater than or equal to C, C is greater than or equal to C. And so what we get is that C is going to be less than or equal to, this is six, six, seven, I believe, the cube root of 667. And that is going to be, and A is going to be greater than or equal to that. Now we must find what sort of integer, because C and A are both integers and we must find what integers are around this. And we know, say that eight cubed is equal to 512. This is just when you memorize the powers of two, you know this and like, I don't know, like for me, I just like remember these powers of two for some reason. And I think nine cubed is going to be greater than this because this is eight plus one cubed, Actually, we can calculate this. Forget eight plus one cubed. This is 81 times nine. This is 729. Yes, because this is 72 plus a nine. So that gives us that C needs to be less than or equal to eight and A needs to be greater than or equal to nine. Now, on the other hand, mind you, what can we do with A or C? Like, what would you do next? Here, I invite you to pause for another five to 10 minutes and see if you can push the problem further. Well, here's the next step, mind you, that because you have this sort of thing, you have this thing is 2001. Now, these are positive integers. So you also know that 2001, which is a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed, this is greater than or equal to a cubed plus zero plus zero. And so now you have an estimate for a, a cubed is less than or equal to 2001, a is less than or equal to the cube roots of 2001. And now which number is good enough here? I think this here is going to be about 12 point something because I think 13 cubed is equal to what? So 13 is equal to 13 cubed is 10 plus three cubed, which is 8,000 plus three times three times 100, which is 900 plus you have what? You have three times nine times 10, and this is already greater than 2001. So we have this is strictly less than 13, which means A is greater than or equal to nine, but less than or equal to 12. And now what you could do is you could go over all the cases for A, A, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then do a similar sort of estimate for B, because you can have then like, then you will have a different equation. You'll have C for A is equal to, let's do 10 because it's the simplest one for A is equal. To, I mean, it's not the simplest one, but it's just the one I can calculate most easily. You'll have B cubed plus C cubed is 1001. 
And now, actually, there's more weight. So you can do the estimates as we did before. But what you can also do here is you can write this as b plus c, because it's the sum of cubes, times b squared minus bc plus c squared is 1,001, which is 7 times 11 times 13. And then you can handle some case work here if that's easier. Like you only do this if it's easier than just like straight up calculating what b is, because here you have b is less than or equal to 10. It can't be 11. And it's greater than or equal to something. And I think that something is 2b, 512. I think it's greater than or equal to 8. So maybe this thing, this thing combined with this factorization gives you, okay, b plus c. What could it be? It can either be 11 or 13, given this constraint, and given that c is less than or equal to 8 and greater than or equal to 1. This gives you like a constraint. So this can be 11 or 13. Uh, nothing else, and you have those two cases. Uh, I mean, you actually have a lot of casework here, but you can also look at this. This is like b plus c squared minus bc. Actually, no, this is minus 3bc. But anyway, here I invite you to pause. I will clear the board now and put all the ideas we had so far. I invite you to pause for another 10 minutes. So now, one very legitimate way was what we said before, you just like do all the cases, A is 9, A is 10, A is 11, A is 12, and do the estimates for B and C. And you can finish up like this. But there's also a better way. And here is, when are cubes cool? That's really the question you're asking yourself. And this comes from like knowing a little bit of background theory, is that instead of thinking of, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you can know. You can just like be aware of like cubes, which modulo give you nice remainders. Or you can know a more general claim that if you have uh, P as an exponent, a prime factor, A to the power of P, then modulo P is modulo P is good. But also if you have P minus one over two, modulo P is also very nice. And if you have a to the power of p modulo p squared is also nice. And in this case, if you do modulo 7, you'll get that 2001 is equal to what? 2002 minus 1. So this is congruent to minus 1 modulo 7. I know this is 7 times 11 times 13 because that's just beautiful. Like imagine 1001 is 7 times 11 times 13, three consecutive primes. Absolutely beautiful. Anyways back to the, our equation. And now what this means is that, well, we can have a, b, and c. We'll need them. a, b, and c modulo 7 are either going to be 0, 1, or negative 1. And if one of them was to be set, like the first thing I think is if one of them was to be divisible by 7, then the other one, then two of them would have to be divisible by 7. And that just does not work out. Like we can just write it out and test it doesn't work out. But there's a modulo 7 thing you can do. Or you can also do modulo 9, which is much nicer because 2001 is congruent to 3 modulo 9. And if you check the remainders, if you have, say, say you have x and x squared, then we're looking at this thing. Modulo 9, you have 0. Actually, not x squared, x to the power of 3. You have 1, 2, three, four, five. And I, after this, like four, you'll get plus and minus. You'll get the opposite. Zero is zero modulo nine. One is one. Two is negative one. Three is zero. Four is what? It's three plus one. So this is going to be one. I mean, you can also calculate this at 64. And this is going to negative one. One, two, five. One is missing. So what you have is that x cubed, so a cubed, b cubed, and c cubed are all 0, 1, or negative 1 modulo 9. So because 2001 is 3 modulo 9, this means that a, b, and c, all of these cubes, have to be congruent to 1 modulo 9. And given that, now you have a is greater than or equal to 9, less than or equal to 12, and the only numbers between 9 and 12, you have 9 is 0, 10 is 1, 11 is minus 1, and 12 is 0, again, modulo 9. This means 
a needs to be equal to 10. And now you have b cubed plus c cubed is equal to 1001. And now again, you know modulo 9 that, well, how can you estimate b? Well, you know 2b cubed is going to be what? It's going to be greater than or equal to 1001. And this is greater than or equal to b cubed, which means b is going to be less than or equal to 10. And it needs to be greater than or equal to what does this give us? It's like 500. Let's say around like 501. B cubed needs to be greater than or equal to that. So this is greater than or equal to 8. And now with that, we know what are we have numbers 10, 9, 8. What is the only one that's one modulo 9? Well, it is b is equal to 10. And that gives us that c is equal to 1. I mean, c cubed is equal to 1. So c is equal to 1. And this solves our problem. Now, how you would write this down is you would say first, we notice that modulo 9, 2001 is converged to 3. And then we would say like x cubed for any integer x is either 0, 1, or negative 1 modulo 9, because we have three of these numbers. And they're modulo 9, you need to sum up to 3. That means a, b, and c are both a cubed, b cubed, and c cubed are all 1 modulo 9. And then you do this combination of the estimates, like a is less than or equal to 12, greater than or equal to 9. And then you get what a needs to be 10. Then that gives you what b is. And that just finishes up the problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving. <laughs>